Hi, my name is Jessica and this is my Bendigo Bank story. Uh, I'm going to tell it in two parts. The first part is what the bank did to us and the second part is my attempts to resolve the issue. So, in 2008, two of my brothers and I uh, formed a company to build a house and we got a block of land on builder's terms and it was being funded by our father. In February, uh, our father became ill and went to hospital. And obviously we didn't want to bother him um, while he was ill, so we decided to approach the Bendigo Bank for uh, funds uh, to complete the build. We first had a meeting with Dion Shirley, who was the then manager of the Greensboro Bendigo branch, and uh, he was very enthusiastic um, and said, yeah, 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 come on down. and." Um, these are the documents you need and we thought oh okay all right this is good and uh, the uh, over the next month we had meetings with um, a number of other bank staff Tina Stojanowski and Peter Othley but what about four weeks had gone past um, the loan sort of hadn't um, progressed at all and uh, then uh, we were sent a um, a regional business banker by the name of Darren Walsh and we thought oh okay good you know and he told us that um, he understood that we'd you know seen a few people and been messed around and he was sent to get things moving so weeks go past phone calls faxes emails the loan still hasn't progressed anywhere we get to the 9th of May <sighs> And we get an email from Darren Walsh that says the Benigo Bank isn't uh, overly happily, happy with this loan, uh, but given the delay, they're prepared to offer us a, a one-year interest-only loan provided um, certain terms and conditions are met. Um, now, the terms and conditions that they laid out were quite high, but we got over them. <laughs> um, one of the conditions was that uh, a block of land that one of my brothers owned in Queensland uh, be put up as security, but a valuation of that block had to be carried out and the value had to come up to a certain amount. So, we uh, were originally supposed to settle on the um, block of land that we were building the house on, on the 13th of June at the latest. Um, the 13th of June arrived, the Bendigo Bank still hadn't carried out the valuation on the block of land in Queensland and then we still had no loan papers, no nothing. And we're phoning and emailing and calling and <laughs> just things just weren't, um, weren't um, going anywhere. And then um, fine, oh, we were very lucky, the developer uh, agreed to put back the um, uh, settlement date to the 30th of June, but um, the, the bank was still finally on the 23rd of June carried out the valuation on the block of land, the valuation came up high enough and on the 24th of June we were then able to give the bank everything, uh, all the rest of the paperwork that it required. On the 27th of June Darren Walsh was still asking us for paperwork and documents which we were faxing and emailing to him and uh, finally on the 30th of June uh, we finally signed loan documents uh, at about 4.45. Uh, this was after Darren Walsh had as I understand it run through the streets of Melbourne with a cheque from the Bendigo Bank to the developer then phoned my brother in Queensland and said, OK, you can sign. So he signed there and then the documents were faxed down to Melbourne and my brother and I in Melbourne signed. Standing at the counter without even so much of the, as the chance to read the documents, let alone obtain any of the correct legal disclaimers. <sighs> so, <laughs> we were like, ooh, <laughs> that was cutting it very far. And I have to say that when we did sign those documents, it was under the most incredible pressure and stress and distress. It had just been the most appalling saga to that point. But there was so much more to come. The next day, 
1st of July, the bank informed us that we would have to sign the loan documents again because there'd been a mistake with my name. How terribly convenient. <laughs> because now the bank could obtain the correct legal disclaimers. Anyway, we um, continued with the build and uh, unfortunately, by that stage, so much time had gone past. We'd wasted an enormous amount of money. We'd all had to go off and find other work um, because the whole process had taken uh, so long. In, in fact, it was not until the 21st of July that we actually got funds to continue building. So that's five months from when we first approached them. And um, really, um, all the damage was done at that stage. We really had no, no chance to properly complete the project. But anyway... We persisted. But um, by the beginning of the following year, it was obvious that we didn't have enough funds to complete the project and we would have to go back to the bank. So in about March, I went back to the bank uh, and approached the Greensboro branch again where they had a new manager, uh, Harold Kersing. And he said that he knew something of our story and I said to him that we needed, you know, $50,000 to complete. And to our surprise, um, the bank said yes, um, without us having to um, complete any more forms or anything, that they would just um, draw up loan documents for the 50000 And during this process, I told Harold that we were planning a, a big push over Easter, um, and we'd assembled a big crew, and we were going to try to complete the house, if not complete it, over that time. So, loan documents drawn up, loan documents signed, loan documents returned to the bank before Easter. My brother from Queensland packed up his truck and all his tools and equipment. He's on the road to Melbourne when the bank calls and says there's been yet another mistake with the loan documents and we will have to sign them again. <laughs> so, I arranged to fax um, paperwork to my brother in Outback, New South Wales, got him to sign, returned the documents to the bank that Harold said had said to me that he would do his best to get us money before Easter but when I returned those sort of documents Harold said to me you do realize I can't give you any money until I have the originals result no money before Easter no big push we don't get to finish now uh, just after Easter when we did receive the money Instead of $50,000, we got $45,445.45, which is $50,000 less GST. And when I contacted Harold about this, he said to me that uh, um, it was a mistake and it was all the money that we were going to get. <laughs> it's just like, you know, at the time, we just thought it was just more incompetence um, from the bank because... They had been so death-defyingly confident, incompetent, I should say, up to that point. But uh, with the benefit of hindsight, I realised that um, when a bank writes a loan, uh, a home loan, it doesn't start to make any money on it until the loan has run for a number of years because it's quite expensive to set a loan up. So when the bank gave us this one-year interest-only loan, it was never going to make any money. In fact, it was going to make a loss. However, if we didn't quite finish the house and the one year came up, the bank would be able to take an almost finished house, which would be relatively easy to dispose of, and take my brother's block of land, thus turning a sure loss into a profit. Now, more things happened. When we got closer to the um, end of the financial year, uh, Harold Kersey, again from the Greensboro branch, called me and said that um, the loan was nearly running out and um, he could offer us a loan term extension and he would come out to the house, see how things are going. If he was happy, then we could um, uh, complete the forms and get this term extension. So he came out, brought the paperwork, I completed the paperwork, returned it to the bank. Now, that's a contract. They gave us a piece of paper, we completed it, I returned it. The next day, I received, in the mail from Harold, uh, loan documents for us to apply for a 15-year loan with repayments of $2,750 a month. Now, 
We only just scraped in previously uh, for the loan, uh, the one year interest uh, only loan. Based on those financials, uh, we wouldn't qualify for a 15 year loan with repayments of $2,750 because the rental would be about $2,000 a month and that would leave a gap of about $750. Result, the bank could take <laughs> the house and my brother's block of land. Um, when I got those, I actually didn't do anything because I knew I had the term request completed and returned to the bank and that was an agreement. In fact, that's a contract. And bearing in mind that a bank's business is contracts, it knows what constitutes a valid contract. It knew when we signed those original documents on the 30th of June that that was just wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Not a valid circumstances at all to be signing a contract. They also knew that um, when I return that term extension request, that's a contract. They had no power to just set that aside, and yet they did. Uh, the 21st of July came around, which was the anniversary of us receiving money, and the bank froze our bank account. And it was at that point that I decided I was going to complain. And I started writing letters and sending them and emailing them to all the contacts within the bank that I had. And um, that resulted in a meeting between a Moira McDonald and an Ashton Cap, who was a regional business banker. Um, they initially didn't know anything about uh, us signing those documents on the 30th of June under those totally inappropriate circumstances um, but uh, they did some more investigating and eventually the bank conceded that yes uh, there had been a delay and it had caused us some difficulties but while all this was going on um, our bank account was frozen unfrozen frozen unfrozen <laughs> and it was as if there were like different parts of the bank who were like arguing with each other over what should happen but then fortunately for us um, we did sell the house and the argument became, you know, null and void. Um, so that's what the bank did to us. And then the next part of my story will be my attempts to resolve the issues with the bank. <laughs>